President, Dr. Pranam Mukherjee, Mr. Karen Rijuji, Dr. Karan Singh Ji, Governor Natwar Singh Ji, Professor Vishwanath Karad, and the founder, Chief Co Convener, PCS Shri Rahul V. Karad. Ladies and gentlemen, firstly, I am greatly honored by all of you to have considered me worthy of this award that you have given me today. I don't know why they chose me. I think your organizers will have to tell you because I am not aware of what I have done. But for all of you to be here from all over the country and especially our former president, Mr. Pranab Mukherjee. I was, when I first came into parliament in 1980, that's 40 years ago today, he was the youngest finance minister of our country. And he was, and he was somebody that all of us youngsters then, we were youngsters then, time moves on, looked up to. And I'm very pleased and very proud that you have found time, sir, to be here this, today on this occasion, which has been a great honor for me. As we have heard, most of you are looking forward to a career to run this country. All of us here on this stage are now on our way out, and it's you who are in your way in. And it's you who are going to be eventually the sh responsive, uh, shoulder the responsibility of running our states and our country. We have problems, you all know them. I don't want to go into national problems as of today because everyone knows what's going on and what you, you all know, what you wish had to happen and what is happening. But I will take you back as you have chosen me as a chief minister that you wish to emulate, to my own state. We are a state that suffered a great deal. Some of you, I am saying this because some of you may not know what Punjab has been through and what we were going through. We were, in 1947, right from Peshawar in the north to Multan and Bhavalpur in the south, right to the current borders of Pakistan and India. That was part of Punjab. And then they took it away, and it's now the bulk of what is Pakistan. Then in 1966, Haryana was created, and the area that was designated as our industrial belt went to Haryana, which is, Gaziab, which is Gurgaon and Faridabad, etc. And why it was done there? It was done there by our Chief Minister, a very forward-looking Chief Minister, very able Chief Minister, Sadar Pratap Singh Kairo, because we were too close to the border and we were always having a skirmish with our neighbor. So he felt that the industrial belt should move out. So what was left of my state, which is today, is 200 kilometers this way and 200 kilometers that way. I am just 10.5 million acres of land. That's 105 lakh acres of land. So we are a small state. And then the country looked at us in the 60s to produce food because in the 60s, we were at that time, had signed an agreement with, the, with America for the PL480, which is known as PL480, to get uh, food grain from them because our country couldn't produce enough food grain for our people. And Punjab was given the task to produce food. We got Philippines rices, we got Mexican wheats, and our universities all worked on them. And eventually uh, came a time then we had to wind up PL480 because Punjab produced the food that the country needed. We were at one time nearly 58% wheat and about 40% rice, which has now come down. 
to about 36 percent wheat and about 34 percent rice because other states have started developing this process. It started with us. So we grew as an agricultural state. And the net result was there was no industry. The only industry we had was along our GT road from the time we entered from Ambala till we reached Amritsar. And little, little was industry was taking place, but not enough to cater to what Punjab required. The world is changing. No state or country can grow on an agricultural economy. You are students of economics. And we had to change to industry. And that is the process through which we are going today. We have emerged as a, as a sort of a uh, industrial hub and people are looking at us and you'll be happy to know that for the first time over 58,000 crores is coming on the ground at the moment and we are hopefully going to exploit that further. I think with this ongoing problems that is happening in China, we are already a lot of interest is being shown by other countries who were earlier in China and now looking towards us as a destination. So hopefully Punjab will grow further in this. And I say this because we have a brain drain going on. You have a lot of Punjabis who are now looking, they look, in, look at television, every home has a television set and they see how the world is developing and how they are developing, which youngsters are developing in the world and somebody's earmarked himself for Canada and somebody earmarked himself and think they are taken for rides by these travel agents, etc. Many don't reach their destinations. And yet, they want to go to make them better themselves in those countries. So now that is something that we want to try and stop by having our own industri industries and our own universities coming up. I've got uh, an equivalent of Ashok, Ashok University, the Palaksha University, which is now underway in Mohali, it's coming up. We have Amity University coming up. We have various universities all over the world coming up because you want that sort of material to be produced for the industry that is coming up. Just day before yesterday, we signed up with a German company, which is uh, coming all the way from Germany to Punjab to put up their units. So that's an addition to what I've been telling you. So these are things that we are looking at now for our younger generation. The IT industry seems to have that bypassed us at that stage. We were not in government and people were not very much interested. They continued to look at agriculture. But now we have to shift. And while we, the country needs our food, we give them the food. But the other thing which we have to watch out for always is a neighbor who is hostile to us. I was happy to see my picture on the screen today with wearing uniform and it what is mo more interesting than the uniform was that I was much slimmer than what I am now <laughs> and that was something which for me has been a great experience in life and I hope well you are already in universities but some of us had the privilege of going through the finest military institutions in the country I was three years at very close to you close to Pune at the National Defense Academy at Kharakwasa and then uh, for a short while at the IMA Dehradun. I say a short while, normally it's a one year tenure. But thanks to the Chinese who came in, so we were pushed out earlier to our regiments and sent out. So I spent the first two years sitting on a hill overlooking China. But that was uh, a great teaching experience. You serve your country, you die for your country, I've known many of my colleagues who have fallen for their country and never looked back at serving the, the, in uniform, whatever it may be. And where all many of my colleagues who were with me at the NDA or the IMA fell in the 65 war and then fell in the 71 war, fell at Cargill and various other places. But they did their duty to their country and that is what a soldier wants always, to die in uniform and I think uh, most of them, nobody who went then would have any regrets. So these are things that we have to look at. Punjab contributes a great deal to the defense services. We are under threat constantly from our neighbor. Previously, it used to be crossing just for smuggling something or the other, but now drugs have become a very major problem. And my biggest thrust today is on drug elimination. 
Uh, they have used various methods. This is all coming through the Afghanistan, Pakistan into us. They are coming directly across the border. They send it across by drones. They send weapons across by drones. They send uh, false, uh, fake currency by drones to try and damage us. And they have now started reaching, reaching the Gujarat ports also and coming from Gujarat to Punjab. Punjab seems to be a market for them. And we have caught a great deal of people on that. We have, Pakistan has not stopped its infiltration into our country. We have neutralized about 17 modules of theirs that have come into our country. We have caught over 100 Pakistani infiltrators who are in our jails now. And they provoke the gangsterism, which has been our second uh, threat provoked by these people. And we have over a thousand gangsters now, which have been locked up, who didn't surrender, so many of them continued to fight with the police and fell. But those who surrendered are now in our jails. So these are the things that Punjab has to deal with. You've got to deal with your new generation that is coming up. You are, have to deal with bringing industry for them. We've got to deal with a hostile neighbor, which is continuously pushing uh, us against, trying to push us against the wall. And we have to continue to produce food for the country. So that's our contribution of our little state. And I think we have done well. People are happy now. Law and order is under control. And by and large, uh, you find a sense of uh, being sort of resilient. They are, but something that is taking them, making, putting that word hope into them, which is something that I happy to see in the eyes of people when I meet them. So these are things that are, are there. Now you, my young friends, from the university, from the various states of our country and the universities from within those states who are here today, you have a great responsibility. India has become a young India. It's your India. We, as I said, are on the way out and you are on the way in. And you have to work hard. As Governor Atwar Singh Ji has said, Politics is not an easy job. Sometime at 2.30 in the morning, when a drone enters Punjab and somebody is spotted it, I get a call at 2.30 in the morning. Or other incidents that take place, you're, you're on duty 24 hours. It gives me pleasure because I feel I'm doing it for my state and for my people. But it is a tough job. So whatever you may do, I have been twice in parliament and I've been five times, my sixth time, I think, in, in the assembly. So one's been a long time there. So one has learnt the ropes. You will have to learn the ropes. Let me explain one thing to you. I first came to Parliament in 1980. And that was my first attempt. And then I felt I didn't know my state well. So I thought that the best way of understanding my state is to go back into the state politics. So start with the state politics. Get to know your constituencies, get to know your people, get to know the problems of your state then only can you effectively represent your state in parliament. So think of that because I've been through it, so I thought I should leave that thought with you. But welcome to this uh, dangle, we can call it, of, of politics. And well, I hope you have a great success in it. And as far as all of you are concerned, I hope God gives you a chance to enter into the political field so that you can serve our country well. I know the thought which has already entered many people's minds that this government, so far what we have done, this corruption business is something that is spoken of all the time. And I think that the newer generation that comes will do away with this. This is something that needs to go because you have lots of problems. People are very, very, very poor. We have in my state, which is considered an affluent state, I have 70% of my farmers who are under debt. And 70% of my farmers who own up to only five acres of land. Out of them, half of them own less than two acres of land. And we are considered an affluent state. So we have these problems and we will deal with them. And I hope you will deal with them better too when you come into our, into our field and, uh, and take over the reins of our country. So thank you. Thank you all for your, your uh, being here today. Thank you for considering me worthy of this award 
and thank you all, all of you, my young friends who have come from all over the country to be part of this ceremony this morning. Thank you all once more.